Welcome to Talking Pass Management, today with no other than Stephen Middleton from the UK. Stephen is the owner and CEO of MITS Pest Control, a family-owned business in the UK that's taking care of rat jobs, bird jobs, and logistics centers, supermarkets, and private clients, so something very hands-on. And Steve is a curious guy, so around two months ago, his journey started with digital products. As you know, one of the biggest theses that we um, represent is that digitization is going to change our service sector worldwide. So Steve's going to give us a couple of takeaways that we can use for our business, that you can use for your business if you're a one-man band or a 10-man band or even a mid-sized company with 50 or 100 employees. These are his technical insights about digitization and yeah, well, I hope you can learn something of it. Enjoy Talking Pest Management with Steve Middleton. Welcome to Talking Pest Management, Steve Middleton of MIDS Pest Control. Did I say that correct, Middleton? Yeah, you did. Unfortunately, you did say it right. My name is Steve Middleton. Um, I am the CEO of MIDS Pest Control. Welcome, Steve. Thanks for being so spontaneous. We chatted uh, like a couple of days ago and you said, of course, I'm ready for, to do Talking Pest Management. So thank you for that. Um, Steve, um, how about you introduce yourself to the viewers, like um, tell the viewers how you came to pest control in the first place. That's one thing that people always want to know. And then how you advanced to uh, work in your own business. I've always wanted to do my own business, but I mean, I've been in the service industry for just over 25 years. Yeah. So we've, we've known what the service industry is about with delivering service. So um, unfortunately I started with, uh, well, I say unfortunate, it's not really unfortunate, but I started with a company called Renskill. <laughs> um, like most of us. Loved it. They put me through the training, they put me through development, they put me through everything I needed to do as a, as a pest control officer. Um, however, what I saw was was lack of ability. So I left Renskill and started up MIDS Pest Control. Uh, MIDS is about giving customers what they want, which is the service. It's all customers want, whether that's a non-toxic, toxic or yeah. just solving their problem. Yeah. They just want one point of contact. Mm -hmm. They want to be able to phone, call, and then deliver. Mm -hmm. As long as you can do that, then you've got a company to start with. Why is Amazon the most successful company in the world? Uh, because they care about their customers. It's service. Service is everything. I agree with you. I know that you've been extremely curious from day one that we started contact or chatting on LinkedIn or Facebook or WhatsApp. And I enjoy your curiosity uh, because everybody that curi is curious just wants to find out how things work and is questioning the current status quo. So I would love if you could take uh, the viewers um, on our journey with uh, on the journey with us, and if you could just tell them why uh, or what would be your critique to the status quo and pest control, what could be done better, and also if you could share your thoughts on the new means of pest control, like digital products, etc., that you started using just two months ago. So it's very fresh experience, first-hand experience uh, that I would love uh, uh, for people to hear. I was quite lucky. I went to a meeting just over two weeks ago, which was uh, the BPCI AGM. Yeah. And there was a massive talk about industries and what's going on and legislation and, and types of how pest control should be run. There was a lot of people who were saying that the norm, which is six, six visits, eight visits, going there every six to eight weeks, getting into that routine pattern. And somebody turned up and said, look, we can't use rodenticide. It's got to be down for four weeks and, and only four weeks. And, and after four weeks, you've got, to, you've got to remove it. So what got me thinking is, is actually we're behind in the UK massively on pest control compared to some of the other countries. And, and I know from talking to yourself and talking to other people abroad that electronic marketing or electronic traps and non-toxic solutions are all coming through. And you're thinking, well, how can I integrate that with my own business? And one of the things I went to is this AGM, and I, was, I sat there listening to people saying, well, we can't do nothing, it's six weeks, it's six weeks. Well, hang on a minute. I'm trialing a piece of kit at the moment, which is monitoring a building 365 days of the year, 24 hours of the day, and it's working. Hang on a minute. Why do I need to go and visit them every six to eight weeks yes. when actually this traps investment is actually working in a building and it's actually catching rats at the moment. I mean, we had a, a trap go off at 
literally one uh, sixteen pm this afternoon, so just over an hour and a half ago. Wow. Um, technicians already phoned the customer, and that technician is now en route to that Pacific customer. Um, and you think, how sorry, but how fast is that actually making it uh, so much easier for Mr. Customer? Wow. I just sorry, I, I don't know what more I can say because at the end of the day. The technician's on his way. He's removing a, a, a dead rodent, which has been in there less than an hour, out of the property. The customer's turning around to us and saying, well, actually, sorry, but what service do you want? That's, the trap's gone off. We're there within an hour. I mean, it's unbelievable. Looking at digital pest control um, and these products, of course, technicians always need to be there um, on demand service, you know, and stuff like that. Um, but for most of the boxes, most of the clients you have, do they actually have an infestation or could the boxes that you routinely inspect for them um, be controlled digitally for most of the times, whereas the technician still would do routine visits but maybe focus on other things like is the door closed, is that hole over there, do we need some proofing works being done and stuff like that. So how do you think the business model is going to change? I'm already changing, Daniel, and my business model is already changing. Um, we used to use a lot of redundancy when I first started. Um, a lot of the venom, a lot of um, different baits from different cummins. And believe me, they were brilliant at the, for doing what they've done. They knock down infestations. They, they really get it. But we're not getting, like, I mean, I think this year I've had two massive infestations where we've had to use redundancy. The others have been three, maybe four, maybe five rats in a loft. And sorry, but you're getting one of the, we had a call out and, and the easiest way of describing it is I've got one I'm, going, I'm doing at the moment um, for this lady. She's got rats underneath her floor. Um, she's had a, a pest control officer already attend and they've used Redensa. So what's happened is she's now had a smell in her house, which is equivalent to raw sewage hmm. for nearly six months. Are it's you kidding me? Wow. Sorry, but this is six months of having that stench come through up into the, 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 the building. And we've gone there and, and, and we've actually taken out just over 30 dead rats from underneath a floor where Mr. Pest Control Officer thinks, okay, just kind of chuck some redensicide down and wow, a problem's gone. Well, yeah, he's killed a problem. But he hasn't got to that root cause. And because he hasn't got to that root cause, he can't solve that issue. Yep. So what we've done is we, we, we've done it a slightly different way. We actually put some tracking dust there. Good. Tracking dust is still one of the most effective things to be using in the pest control industry. Technology is not going to replace tracking dust. No, no, no. But what it's going to do is enhance it so we can use it with yes. electronic digital systems to actually find out where it's going. It's the pest cam very, very well. This one come back for this morning to be downloaded. Um, some of the footage what we've actually got on this is it's just done bloody real. <laughs> Mr. Rat running round underneath the the floor of this Pacific house led us to where the hole needed to be cut open. We've opened the floor up from where the actual rat was going into a gap in the hole. So rather than taking up the whole of this customer's kitchen floor, <laughs> We've done a hole which is 30 by 30. Nice. To be underneath the floor was a lovely little solid pipe, 10 inches round, like that, going straight down into the sewers. <laughs> it wasn't picked up on a drain camera survey because it's not connected to the network which was actually in the house. Oh, right. So it's a dead pipe which actually led oh, right. out of the building uh -huh. into the next door neighbour's house whose drain wasn't surveyed. Are you kidding me? Oh, wow. Uh, that's where they're actually coming through. It's a next door neighbor's <laughs> drain and coming straight through underneath the floor into an old drainage system, straight up into the actual floor of the kitchen. But without that, that customer would have possibly paid in the region between four to five hundred pounds more to have their floor lifted by a professional chipping. And that's wow. the difference of, yeah. of having technology. Yeah. I mean, we ended up putting 35 <coughs> snap traps underneath his floor. <laughs> um, and it makes me laugh. Yeah, we, we caught some rats in the, in the actual traps, don't get me wrong. But yet again, Pest Camp sent the old picture telling me that the traps have gone off, phone call to the <laughs> customer. We're on our way. 
as you know, I've, I'm, I've got several of these pest cams now. Yep. And I believe in my business they are paid for themselves already. Mm -hmm. I um, mean, I, yeah, and I mean, you, you can rent that extra service to the uh, to the client. I mean, this is how our other partners pay for it. They just have like a weekly or bi-weekly um, kind of fee for the cams as an additional service so they don't have to be at the site like every second day or something and that's completely exactly toxin free yeah. exactly what so one thing i would love to learn from you is how would you think the sector is advancing within the next let's say five to ten years um, i am thinking at the numbers that i have in my mind are most of the times um, a technician, you know, we've all been down the field doing uh, um, baiting and all of that and we've all do, uh, done routine yep. services ourselves, so I did it myself too and I know that you still, you need like two minutes to open up a box and control it and write in your tablet or in your smartphone the status of the bait or the trap in the, in the box and you just clean the box and you run over to the next box. So let's say roughly you have around two to three minutes per box. Um, this is the number I always that's always in my head competing with digital pest control because if you put down like a digital trap there um, that is reasonable well priced today and the prices are gonna go down like with everything technology wise when it's being used in larger quantities. So um, my thought and um, the, the competing numbers that I have in my mind are these three minutes versus the 24 hours of a digital trap whatever manufacturer it would be that has 24 hours per day, which results to 8,760 hours per year, which is 525, 600,000 uh, minutes, com uh, I mean, competing with the three minutes here. And of course, the three minutes times, I don't know, six visits uh, uh, equals to 18 minutes per year per box, but it's still, I mean, it's over 100,000% uh, bigger. Um, uh, um, Most technicians, Daniel, don't disguise. <laughs> straight over their head mate because all they're interested in doing is going out and what they we class in the trade as day checking yeah. because the majority of these sites where they're going to there is no hardly any activity on the outside and, and they're literally just going around the sites ticking a box mm. and it's a job for them yep. where I think the where the where digital, and I can see digital working, and you say what, what we've got planned for the next five to ten years. My business within the next five to ten years will be digital. It's as simple as that. And the reason why it's going to be digital is in two years to three years' time, so we're going to be losing the side without a shadow of a doubt. And yep. I can see it coming now. I really it's can. happening. I mean, after I heard uh, the, the conversation at the AGM about the, the owl, there's no success with the owls and the livers at the moment. And yeah. Still showing heavy redensity, yeah. even yeah. though we're actually trying to license everybody mm. and trying to get <clears> to, to have certain levels of degree in, in how to use redensity. Myself personally, in two to three years' time, I can see customers having to pay out, and it's not a matter of uh, when. It's it's a matter. So yeah. it's not a matter of how. It's going to be a matter of when. And when that switch agree. overcomes, I think so many companies out there are going to go, oh shit, why mm. haven't we done this already? Yep. And, and why haven't we listened to people mm. in the industry mm. who are, are actually favoring towards non-toxic yep. and, and electronic exactly. systems already? Mm. If we don't change with modern times now and get onto the bandwagon, mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a reason why I sit here today and, and sit in front of you having a conversation with you and having a chat with you about pest, uh, pest management and way forward is because we've built trust up over the last couple of months. Um, trust goes both ways, but so does products. And I mean, there's companies out there where I've, I've field tested and tried. Um, and yes, they've got an excellent product, but they haven't got the service to go behind it. Um, and some of the, the companies that we've tried, we've been straight away. I mean, the cameras, I, I can't get over how bloody good they are. <laughs> I still can't get over good over it. How, it's just how simple they are. To, one of the things we're finding is the signal is fantastic. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know what SIM cards you're using because on, the, on the, the camera and on the traps. International roaming, it, always the best network available. <laughs> yeah, it's to me personally, I think it's brilliant because they're picking up signals everywhere. I mean, yeah, they do. I've had some of these in a, a middle of nowhere. Yeah, I know, I know. And um, I can't, still can't believe that we're getting feedback coming through. I mean, I've put these traps through their paces. Um, 
The only one thing I would say, the only drawback, and there's mm. always a drawback with... Always. With Far Google, away. It's your aerial. That's oh. The only one because thing rats can nibble on it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. That's what I can see them doing. I can see them actually just trying to, to get hold of it and actually I know, use it as I know. potentially like a worm or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're curious. They will eventually nibble on it, yeah. <laughs> Toxic has its place mm -hmm. at the moment. In three years' time, two, three years' time, is Toxic going to be there? No. Is Electronics going to be there in two, three years' time? I, I honestly don't know. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and that's being honest with you. I honestly don't know if even if something like this, mm. in four, three to four years' time, is this going to be this big or is it going to be half the size with a remote camera on rest it? Rest assured, we're assured working on it. <laughs> coming out firing at the rat as it's running down the side. Yeah, yeah, it and could well, be. None of us know what's around the corner. I mean, if we went back to 1980s to Back to the Future, hmm. when um, he brought out a skateboard with a hoverboard, man, hmm. well, Mullivan's driving around on a freaking hoverboard now, for Christ's sake. You yeah, think, you're right. Wow, 1980s to, yeah. to now, yeah. it's like... 40 odd years and then they've got bloody hoverboards. I exactly, mean, it's gone pretty quickly. <laughs> what, what, what is the future yeah. of pest control? I mean, yeah. from, from, from when I first started in sales and security, CCTV went the same. And they bought out, national companies bought out every single small company in the UK. Um, and they, they, got a, they got a lovely name which is called uh, Another Damn Takeover or ADT. <laughs> They bought everything. Um, wow. And literally now all of the small companies now started coming back again because people want that small, um, the family run, the sort of... Yeah, I know, they want that. Service. Yeah, I mean, exactly. You deliver that service, whether it's a digital hmm. or a denticide or yeah. um, nothing. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Hey, thank you so much for your time. I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much for that, Steve. All right, you guys, thank you for watching. That was Talking Pest Management with Stephen Middleton. Very interesting to learn what kind of changes he has seen for our sector, what kind of changes he is seeing for his company, thanks to digital products. Um, a lot going on definitely in this sector. Time will tell, but it's gonna be interesting for sure. And it was really interesting to learn from his very fresh insights. Now, make sure to subscribe to our channel. As always, we'll be really thankful so we can make more of these videos. So subscribe, hit the bell icon so you will get notified when we post a new video. Also, feel free to like and comment on our videos so we have some feedback to work with and make things better. And it would be much appreciated if you follow us on all social media channels. We have Instagram, we have Facebook, we have LinkedIn, and uh, you'll find us just about anywhere or on our website, futura-germany.com. Thank you again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.